Why hello guys. Aaron here with another fountain pen video. And uh, today uh, I want to talk about the pen that you see in front of you. In my last video I asked you guys to tell me what pen you thought this was. And all of you commented that you felt as though this pen was a Schaefer balance. So let's put a Schaefer balance in here real quick. Put them side by side. And we can talk a little bit about some of the characteristics or what makes a Schaefer balance. Well, first biggest thing I think when you think of a Schaefer balance, at least for me anyways, is you think of a cigar shaped pen or a cigar for that matter. Um, the second thing for me, and this is only for me, is I think of the white dot. Um, now, obviously, I know not every Schaefer balance or every Schaefer pen for that matter is going to have the white dot because they wouldn't have produced it with that because that was obviously something that showed the or, or let them know that the pen had a lifetime guarantee. <clears throat> now, another big characteristic of a Schaefer balance, a lot of times, or at least for me anyways, is the nib, or I'm not sorry, not the nib, but the clip as well. Now, you'll notice that these two pins fit two of the first three portions, but the clips are definitely uh, different. Um, another piece um, is also the filling mechanism. Most of the Schaefer balances that you see are lever fillers. Now, you'll notice the one down below is not a lever filler. Now, not all Schaefer balances were lever fillers. I do know that there were some that were vacuum fillers that were produced. The pen that you see down below, the red one, is a vacuum filler. So all of this being said, what does it mean? Does it mean that this pen's a Schaefer balance? Does it mean it's not a Schaefer balance? Well, I can definitely tell you this. It is definitely a Schaefer pen. So the first thing that I want to kind of look at is the barrel imprint here. So we'll kind of read that off. So we have WA Schaefer Pen Company. Fort Madison, Iowa, USA, and the USC Made in USA. Now, when you look down below, you'll see something else that says 1000. So, what does that 1000 mean? Well, let's look at this one. So, this one has the same type of barrel imprint, so to speak, but no 1000 down there. Now, does that mean that this pen is a Schaefer balance? Well, that's what we're going to find out. So, the pen that you see down below is not, in fact, a Schaefer balance. It is a Schaefer Triumph Statesman, or a lot of people will call it a Schaefer Triumph 1000 or a Schaefer 1000. I've heard it called like a thousand different things. Now, what makes a pen a Schaefer Triumph? Is it the filling mechanism? Is it the materials? Is it, you know, what is it? It's actually the nib. Um, Triumph nibs were very, very unique nibs, very unique in their design. Um, if you haven't seen a, tri a Triumph nib, definitely Google it um, or even look it up on YouTube. I'm there's a lot of great videos about Schaefer Triumph nibs and people that can probably explain to, to you the benefits of that nib better than I can. Um, but it was a very interesting nib. The nib actually encases the entire feed almost, at least it wraps around that feed. Now, when would this pen have been produced? Well, the first vacuum filler um, was introduced in 1934, actually. Um, that was introduced on the Wasp pen line. So kind of more of a, a second tier pen line. Um, and what were some interesting characteristics about the vacuum filler? Now, this is a vacuum filler, not like a Parker Vacuumatic, but more like a Twisby Vac or a Pilot Custom 823, where you have a, a rod and a plunger, and you simply take your pin, put it in your ink, and you unscrew your blind cap, you pull your rod and your plunger back out, and then you push it back down. What that does is it pushes all of that air out. You'll notice that it's just pushed back. Pushes all of that air out till you get down to the very end and then you hear kind of like almost like a little pop. 
and then you'll notice ink just comes shooting into the barrel. So again, same filling mechanism on this pen that you have on that 823. Not a lot of things have changed, honestly, in all of these years. So when would this pen have been made? Was it made in the 30s? Was it made when? So this pen, from everything that I've been able to research, would have probably been produced in about the mid 1940s, possibly in the 43 to 45 range is when the pen would have more than likely been produced. And that was really when um, uh, Triumph pens were, were very popular um, and uh, vacuum fillers, I, I think, were a, a lot more popular. Triumph pins were offered in both the lever filler as well as this vacuum filler that you see in front of you. So it wasn't necessarily you would get one filling mechanism. You had a choice. Now, what are some advantages to the vacuum filler? Well, it's actually very similar to a Parker Vacuumatic. You had a much greater ink supply would be the first advantage because you're not dealing with a rubber sack. You're literally filling this barrel up with ink. Um, and to me, you almost had a greater ink capacity. Now, I haven't measured this and compared it to a Parker Vacuumatic, but I can just tell you on one, one fill on this pen, I get a lot more ink in that barrel than I do on any of my Parker Vacuumatics. And part of that is you don't have that diaphragm in the back here taking up space. You literally just have this entire barrel that you can fill up with ink. So that's, another, that's one of the biggest advantages. Um, what's another advantage, so to speak? Um, I would say another advantage is if you do this type of filling mechanism right, which they did in this case, you have the ability to be able to see how much ink is in your pen. Now, you can do that with a rubber diaphragm pen, and I'll show you, for instance, on this Schaefer Balance, this has an ink window. Now, the only problem with that is, for whatever reason, whether they didn't market it right or they just didn't do it right, this ink window in this section never really took, so to speak. It never was very popular. It definitely cannot compete with Parker and what they were offering at the time, especially from a materials perspective. Whereas this here, not only is this material beautiful, but it's translucent. The barrel is translucent. So you can actually see that ink inside of that pen. And right now I'm moving around and you can kind of see that ink moving around right now inside of there. And I can literally see that piston rod. And another thing I've noticed in a lot of the pictures, the videos, and in this pen, for instance, I think if the restoration especially is done right, but even without some of them that are restored, this material, it kind of has like an inner casing, so to speak. The coloring, um, it doesn't amber as much as it does on a lot of the Parker Vacuumatics that you'll see. So you're actually able to see the ink and the materials on the inside of the pen much better. And I think that's kind of neat to me. Um, the color that you see in front of you is the Carmine color is what they actually called this pen. And it's just, I'm not a big red person. I don't necessarily like the color red a lot, but this pen is gorgeous. I mean, it's just beautiful. Um, and th that was the first thing. When I saw this pen, it, I was just like, that is, a, that is an attractive pen. You know, it was up for auction. Um, it was the very beginning of the auction, and I decided, okay, I'm going to wait on it. I'm just going to watch it. I'm going to see how much it goes for. Um, and there was something about the pen that I wasn't sure about. Um, number one, the seller said they got it from a, um, an estate sale, so they didn't know much about it. They had not tested the pen, so they didn't know if it would even fill with ink. So I wanted to see how much the auction would go for um, and see what would happen. So we've talked about the filling system, kind of showed you guys the materials. Now let's really, really dig into the pen. So. Obviously, this is your standard cigar-shaped pen. Now, it's not a large pen. Um, it only measures five inches cap. So again, not a large pen at all. When you uncap this bad boy, it's only four and one quarter inches uncapped. 
but when you post it, it's about a five and one half inches. So definitely manageable uh, if you have large hands, if you uh, post the pin. Now, when we look up at the top of the pin, kind of give you a little twirly, so to speak, show those materials. You've obviously got your white dot to show you your lifetime warranty. You see that clip there, very stiff clip. This clip is a little bit bent as you can tell, which is something I've noticed with a lot, I mean, a lot of vintage pins for that matter, but definitely a lot of Schaefer pins. Um, one thing I really like is as you go down, you've got this fatter cap band. And I definitely like that because it's all the way to the end of the pin where you don't have any of the um, plastic coming through. So it's gonna be much more um, unlikely for this pin to the cap to chip, so to speak, at the end, like you see on a lot of pins, especially if you post it over time. Now, we're gonna uncap this bad boy. So obviously it is a twist off cap, and then it's gonna reveal that section. Now, this section is awesome. And it's awesome for a few reasons. Number one, it's the same material as the rest of the pin, which I really like. Now there is a slight step down, but you don't really notice it. And the, the threads, even though they're metal, they are definitely not sharp. They're somewhat shallow and, and they definitely don't uh, cut into your fingers. But the section is textured and it is perfect. It just feels nice when you hold this pin in your hand. Now, first thing you may notice if you're looking at this pin is this does not have a Triumph nib on it. So what, what it, one of the most unfortunate things about um, Triumph nibs and, and Triumph pins in general is if you go to restore them, one of the most common issues is damaging the nib slash feed during repair. Because you have a nib and the way that it's actually placed inside of the pin um, and the fact that the nib encases the entire feed, it is very, very common to damage the nib and feed, unfortunately beyond repair. And so that was one of my, con really my biggest concerns of purchasing this pen is the fact that it did not have the original nib on it. And once I got towards the end of the bidding and I didn't bid till the very, very end, I felt comfortable bidding on it. And I'll tell you why. The pen sold for $30. I, my, my, I bid right at $30. I kind of had my idea. I was willing to go to 35, maybe even 40, but the only reason why I, I was very hesitant to do that is I see a lot of these pins sell on eBay with the original nib for around 50 to 60 bucks. So why would I spend that much not knowing what I'm getting? But in my mind, I was thinking, okay, this pin has an ever sharp nib on it. And you'll notice that nib has a, the tines are very wide at the end and I, I could tell that this might be a really interesting nib to use and I have other Eversharp pins so I thought okay if it doesn't work in this pen I could always transition that nib over to one of my Eversharps and I could find a nib and feed for this pen and I could have uh, this pen completely restored. Now much to my surprise when I received the pen, the pen has obviously already been restored. I have done nothing to this pen. Um, I sit there, I messed around with it. The, um, the filling mechanism works very well. It works just as good as my Pilot Custom 823. It filled up immediately, pinned to paper, wrote the first time, and has been flawless ever since. I have not had to do anything to this pen. So essentially this pen is, is basically, you could say a Franken pen, so to speak. You know, you don't have the original nib. You've got a different branded nib in this pen, but it works, it does the job. Um, this pen has quickly become one of my favorite pens, not only because of the color, the materials, I really enjoy this filling mechanism because it just allows me to write for long periods of time, but the nib is a really nice nib. It's a nice ever sharp nib and it does really well in this pen um really guys that's it you know and so i paid 33 dollars and 75 cents with shipping so i won the auction for 30 dollars paid 375 for shipping um it was obviously a u.s seller it 
got to my house in I think five to six days. So what does that mean for you guys? Well, these are pins that I think are really, really cool. And I was looking at a lot of the sold auctions on eBay and obviously there's a lot of other places you can go to buy these pins. And a lot of the, the auctions were for pins that had already been restored. And I mean, generally, I, you know, saw these pins sell for anywhere between $40 to $70. Now, obviously, depending upon materials, the quality of the pin, as far as the restoration, you're going to see prices inflate well above $100. But I think you could get a pretty interesting, nice quality pin for around $50 to $70. If you're willing to, you know, take your time, be patient, you can find a pin very similar to this with more than likely the original nib. Um, at some point, I will get another one of these pins and make sure it comes with the original nib, obviously. So I'm gonna do a writing sample next and then we'll kind of finish up with the video from there. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, I am back for the writing sample. So, as I said before, this is the Schaefer Triumph. And I'm gonna go with Statesman. Now, one thing you notice about this um, nib and feed combination is it, it definitely writes a nice wet line. Um, the ink that I am using, if you guys care to know, is the Waterman. Audacious Red. This is not a pen that I would use on like really cheap paper um, because it, it definitely writes a, a fatter line, a much wetter line, but I have written with this pen a lot lately. And I've, this, I'm already on my second fill and this pen definitely holds a, a decent amount of ink. I mean, it's not a, a large pen by any means, but that barrel really fills up. I mean, I get the ink all the way up to about right here when I fill this pen up. And so definitely get a, a nice amount of ink. So there you have that part. So, you know, as far as wetness, you know, again, this pen just, you know, gushes out ink. Very wet rider, very, very wet rider. You know, it, you can get some line variation with this nib. You know, this nib would be actually really cool and just about any ever sharp pen that I have, but you can get some decent line variation. It already has a, a pretty fat line, um, but it's just, it's smooth, it doesn't give, you know, it does give a little bit of feedback, but not, it just is a joy to write with. And who would have thought, you know, I was honestly kept my expectations very low for this pin. Now I was excited because I thought the pin was attractive, but I was not expecting to get this pin, the filling mechanism to work as well as it does, and the nib, I wasn't expecting really to get a lot out of the nib and feed combination. I just figured somebody popped that in there to try and make it work. But obviously whoever owned this pin, whoever did the restoration, um, really took the time, whether they're the ones that damaged the nib or not, doesn't matter. But they definitely wanted to make sure that this pin could be loved by someone. And I can definitely say I love this pin. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm definitely, going to look for another one of these pens and um I, I i think you guys should definitely consider this pen if you don't have one of these pens in your collection definitely consider it um just the materials alone are are awesome you can't go wrong with them um, i do want to show you guys um, 
the pen that I'm wanting to review for my next video. And um, let me get it out real quick. It's inside of its case. I just got it today. I haven't even inked it up yet. So, <clears throat> and you guys tell me what you think it is. I'm just gonna kind of show you briefly what it looks like. You guys kind of tell me what it is. I don't wanna reveal the logo or anything. Show that part. Clip's really interesting. It kind of pops up higher. So you guys tell me what it is. Um, I have not seen a video review of this pen. Um, I did, I'll give you a hint, I did have to purchase it overseas, so I waited a little bit of time for it, but I purchased this pen well below what it generally retails for, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping it writes good. Um, but I'm gonna write with it for the next few days, see how it performs and then be looking for that review. But let me know down in the comment section what you guys think this pen is, and we'll see if anybody gets it right. Guys, until next time, everyone take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.